All right, so now the next step is we are going to learn how to use an array list. We're going to learn about all the methods that are inside of an array list. They aren't special to an array list. A lot of them are methods that array list had to implement because it was a list. Um, now the slides actually have a pretty nice collection of this with the um, using examples of this of um, the seven dwarves, but. I think I want to go ahead and just show the uh, show my own examples in um, in a terminal for you, just so that you can see what happens to the list as it grows. Um, but there's a nice list of, but it goes through the whole generics things over here. It has slides over here. The slide should be uploaded onto the course website, and you can check it out. And it goes over the reason we wanted to use a generics, which I've already talked about, and he, and those methods here. Remember, E is just simply the type of the list we're working with, right? So we're going to go ahead and give an ex example, right? Um, and I'll come back to this. So let's first by start, start by booting up a terminal. And that's kind of interesting, right? That I'm booting up a terminal to show you guys this. But, like a, but what I'm doing here is I'm showing you guys a REPL. So let's go ahead and increase the font size over here. So I'm going to start up JShell, which is the Java REPL. What it's going to do is it's going to read the line, it's going to evaluate the line, it's going to print the, some kind of result, and it's going to then loop. That's what it means, REPL. Python, when you type Python into the terminal, it gives you a REPL. Um, so there's two commands first before we start that just we want to know, in case you want to know how to use the REPL. Use slash help. And... That brings up all the different types of commands you can do in here. And then slash exit to get out of this thing, right? Which is actually kind of important. All right, so I just cleared this. And again, you can only use this if you've got, Java, uh, you need Java 9 for this. So if you've got Java 8, you won't be able to do this, but that's not important if you can't do it, okay? So let's just go ahead and start with JShell. So if the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to create a list of strings. To hold, uh, to hold stuff. We're going to call it list just because. And we're going to create a new array list of string over here. Right? The only thing that's really changed for making uh, for making our items is this introduction of generics. Right? We could easily do this, but then we'd start getting warnings if we actually did it like that in in Java. It's our, in, our, in our IDE. And also we'd have to deal with casting. And if we accidentally added something like an integer to the string, sorry, like an integer to the list of strings, that could potentially be an issue. So this protects us by saying we are only going to take strings inside of here, right? And also the way I typically do this, I say, what this is a list that I'm creating. What kind of list? It's an array list. So the interface type on the left is perfectly acceptable so long as we use a class implementing it on the right. Now. If you prefer, it's perfectly acceptable to do this. It just happens to be five character strokes longer. I prefer to use list string and then say, what kind of list? Array list, just to emphasize that you can do this, right? You can store the more specific type in the more general type. Now what this does, when we create a new array list of strings, it creates a new array list to hold things. And it has an underlying, and it's, at, it's empty. Right, it looks like an empty array right there. If I type list, it will show that it's empty. Um, right, and all I have to do to type some to print something out is to type the variable, which is nice. Right, I could do system dot print line here, but there's no need. Right, um, but anyway, this is empty, and we say that this will have a capacity of ten, meaning it can hold ten items before it has to resize the underlying array, because that's the way an array list works. It has an array underneath of it, and it's going to grow the array as need be. As we need more items, we're going to grow the array to get bigger and bigger. So, um, and right now, it's got a capacity of 10, meaning it's allocated 10 uh, spaces for us, which is more than enough for our example. So the first thing we need to do is start adding t stuff to this so that we can use it. The most basic add command is just add and then add an item and this will slap it onto the end of the list at the 
So, for instance, oh, let's say this is a list of swords. Uh, the first kind of sword I'd like to uh, use is a Ziphos. I think that's a Greek sword. I'm not sure. Can't really remember. Right now, I just know it is. Right? And that returned true. Okay, so interestingly enough, so uh, if you type a variable, it's going to tell you what the variable is. And if you type it, use a method, it will tell you what the method returned. It says, like, line, four, that's what this means, command four, right? One, two, three, four, return true. And I actually can reference that, I think. Yep. And does that mean that command five is? Nope. That, that means we didn't do command five yet. It just simply asked us what command four, what line four was. Right, so that's pretty cool. So command four was true. That was list that add. Right, and if I type list, it shows that Ziphos is in there. Okay, that's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and add some more items. List.add uh, Zweihander. So that's a double, that's a two-handed sword. Very large two-handed sword. And that also returned true. Uh, so the add method returns a Boolean. It, um, it will always return true for lists. Um, the reason it has a Boolean attached to it is because the collection class that is um, the granddaddy that uh, list extends from, the granddaddy interface that um, list extends from, specifies that when you add a method to a collection, well, a collection may or may not accept duplicates. So, uh, as a result, you have to have a true or false for that this kind of ad, for this add method, right? Um, this is only going to be an this is, so it's always going to return true uh, for all the stuff that we learn here. Um, the exception will be trees, maybe, but that depends on how you implement trees. And I'm going to allow our trees to accept duplicates, and. So it's really going to come up only in Chapter 7 when we learn about sets. And that's the only time where basically we might get false back. Okay, But for right now, you, for the purposes of this chapter, yeah, uh, this will always return true. The other type of add method right, is saying I want to add something as specific index. Saying I want to add like a uh, saber right, at index 1. Right? I'm inserting this into index 1. And what this do means is that basically we are pushing all the other items any of the items that I need to out of the way, right? Zweihander is at index one. I'm going to insert uh, Saber at index one, and that doesn't override it. It's going to push it out of the way, right? So now Zweihander is at index two. That's fantastic. It automatically, like, moves stuff over, right? Let's look at this again. This time I'm going to add Katana, right? So now it pushed, it moves both Saber and Zweihander out of the way. It moved them both out of the way. That's fantastic. It's automatically like re, uh, reordering the stuff for us if we insert something into the list and it keeps the order, right? So now Katana's at index one, Saber's at index two, Zweihander's at index three, okay? A uh, couple thing, one last thing to note. Let's go ahead and add, okay? Um, so if I try to add, let's go ahead and add a pull, try to add a pole arm at a bad index, right? Right? Two things to note, actually. First, if you try to add at an index like that, it's out of bounds. Okay, and notice by the way that over here that we weren't getting anything back uh, when we added, when we specified an index we wanted to insert this item at. That's because that's a void method. Why? Well, because for because the inserting at an index only exists for lists, and if you're working with lists, you can pretty much assume it's going to be added. Uh, I guess. The other answer must be that it's to confuse you guys. But list with two arguments is a void. Sorry, list.add with two arguments is a void method. This is not something you're going to be tested on. It's just something that you'll you'll notice when you're programming. Um, okay. So now if I try for so now let's go back to list.add. If I try to add uh, if I try to add scimitar to index 4, however, notice that this is 0, 1, 2, 3. Well, 4 is over here. If I were to add scimitar over here, they wouldn't be getting any gaps. The reason it doesn't allow you to add spear over here at index 7 is that it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 
So four would be blank, five would be blank, six would be blank, and then seven would be sphere. We'd have like three nulls there, and you don't want to do that with the list. You don't want any, any empty spaces. So instead we're going to just add, I mean conceptually, so instead we're going to add four. So now notice that, that, that that's fine because it doesn't create any gaps there. All right, so um, that's the add method, right? And that's fairly straightforward. Just adding stuff to a list M makes perfect sense. All right, now what else can we do um, before we start removing stuff? Well, we can, um, you can use a very in interesting method um, called list.indexof. So this is one of the one of the really cool th reasons why we would want to use a list over an array list is this sorry an array list over an array is because you've got access to some of these really nice methods like index of I'd like to know the index of uh, Zweihander okay and it will tell me hey that's at index three that's awesome right so I can find where something is and I can use this in conjunction with another method right if I know where something is then I can try adding it uh, like then I can try uh, doing something to it Right, I could get it, or I could return, or I could um, modify it. Okay, so list of so the index of method will tell me where something is located. Uh, if I try to though look for something that doesn't exist, it re doesn't give me an error. It returns negative one, and negative one is kind of you when you're dealing with indices. It's un in Java, that is what's universally used as. This index does not exist. The item does not exist in the in whatever you're looking for, right? So that's something to keep in mind if you're coming from Python, where negative one can be something entirely different. That's actually a valid index in Python. Um, it gives you the last item of the list. So negative one returns. Uh, so if it returns negative one, it couldn't find it, right? Um, also worth noting that index of um, and you can dive into the documentation and see how to get around this, or um, or ways to, or what you can do about this. If I were to add a second katana, right? List dot add katana, right? So we now go to list, right? The list can hold duplicates. And now if I do list dot index of katana. It's going to give me one. So index of looks through the list and it gives you the, and basically it gives you the index of the first thing you're looking for. So it's going to give me the index of the first katana here. Okay. So now that we've got the index of method, there is also just generally also a contains method, which tells me true or true if it's there or false if it's not. It doesn't give me the index; just returns true or false. Right, but we could easily use index of to give the same information or to gain additional information. All right, so we've got the index of, and also remember we've already gone over this, but there's also the size method, which tells us how big the list is. Right, it's six. Notice that returns how many things are in it, not the uh, capacity, which is the amount of things we can hold. We'll talk about the capacity more in depth when we actually make ourselves our own array list. Okay, so list dot um, all right, so now let's go ahead and go with the remove method. So let's go ahead and remove that first katana, the katana at index one. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go string item is equal to list dot remove index one. So it's going to remove the item at index one and store it in item. It says item is equal to katana. So when you remove an item, when you use the remove item, it will store it in a variable if you so choose to store it in a variable, like I just did. Also notice for the REPL, I didn't have to use I don't have to use semicolons here to end my my phrases. However, if I decide to um, I'm going back to the remove. If I decide not to use a variable, I can just remove something and it's gone. So let's look at our list now. So we removed index one, which meant that we pulled this out. And that meant that Saber went down, then Zweihander, then Scimitar, then Katana. And then we removed Zipphos, which, which made that uh, 
Saber went down to index 0, Zweihander's index 1, Scimitar's index 2, Katana is index 3. So the remove is fairly straightforward. It will return the item you remove. One last thing to note about remove is that there's an alternate usage you can use. You can give it an item that you would like to remove, and it will remove it, and it will return true if it was able to do so, false if it was not. List, and let's go ahead and try removing Katana one more time, right? It couldn't do that because Katana no longer exists in the list. All right, the last two methods are get and set, and then I'll review them all at the end of this video, which I think is a bit longer than most of them, but it's fairly straightforward. List.get an item at index one, right? This is comparable to the whole, to, right? If I were to do string s is equal to in, uh, list dot get index one, this is comparable to me doing a uh, string s is equal to um, array one, doing that, right? And that store, and that just gets the item. It stores Zweihander in S. It doesn't take it out of the list, right? It's not out of the list. Now the other thing we can do is that we can um, is that we can set an item. Okay, so we've got list dot set an index. We want to set the in what's ever at index one to um, to this. We want to set it to broadsword. Now this is the equip. Now this is almost, and we're going to go over this in the next line that I write. Almost the equivalent of array um, one is equal to right. It's almost the equivalent of this. It's, I mean, it does do the same thing, where it does set index 1 to broadsword, right? It's going to replace uh, Zweihander with broadsword. Okay, but notice that it returned Zweihander. So actually, what this will do is that it will take, um, is that it also basically does two, two things at once. It not only replaces the item there, but it returns the, old, the item that was there to you, which is now broadsword. So let's go ahead and change that to longsword over here so s has broadsword and now list there's a thing so a set can will return the item it's replacing so you set to replace an item it will also return the item it's replacing okay so let's just review the um what we've got here, we've got get and set, which are equivalent to the array operations to get an item at an index and to change an item at an index. Although with set, you get the added advantage of that you can get the item back that you're replacing in the same line that you're actually doing the replacing. That's cool. You've got add and remove to add and remove items. You can add items just by throwing it onto the end of the list, right? Or you can complete, or you can just specify what index you want to add it manually. And it's really cool. Um, let's see what. So now you've got the remove. The remove you can remove items in two ways. Uh, you almost always do it the first way, which is removing an item at a specific index. The second way, which is rarely used, is asking to remove a specific item from the list. The other, uh, the other important functions, uh, contains wasn't too important, but it's useful. Uh, but index of was the really important one, which given an item re uh, re returns what index that item is at. And then there's size, which gives you how big the list is, right? The size is now three. All right. So that's that. Let's, I'll show you one more example in the next video of how to use these things. And then I think we'll go and build an array list from scratch.